into the past. We're going to invite your guides in, my guides in, to help you. We're going to go down a stairway from the red to the purple backwards. In front of you, you will see a staircase landing. Take one step down. It's going to brighten red, vibrant staircase. Shoots up and it envelops you. Travels up your legs and sits your tailbone, illuminating red. Take one step down. Orange. Vibrant orange. Travels up your legs, up through the root chakra, curls around your spine, sits in your pelvic sacrum. Vibrant orange. Out. Take the one step down. your legs through around your spine, through the root, through the sacrum, into your solar plexus, around your spine, shiny bright, warm, happy place, gut instinct. To take one step down, compassion the universe took one step down always traveling down step down, take that step, purple, deep purple, third eye, intuition, up your legs, really, up your spine, swirling around, orange, upwards, yellow, to spirit, to the unknown, shining bright, this is where you'll see, this is where it begins, take one step down, Thank you. 
Push it open, and it will be bright white light. So bright that you think that you have to shade your eyes from the brightness. Don't do it. Look up. See the light, the connection to the universe, to source. come forward, willing to speak, and give you the knowledge that you seek. When you're ready, now we're, go we're going to move backwards in time and seek the knowledge that you wish to attain. When you're ready to move and you're done with the hugs and the welcomes and the greetings, say done. I'm ready, and we will move forward, backwards, into the past. soul will come forward, your guys will come forward, they will greet you, your soul may want to talk in third person, and that is fine, the vessel, her name is Michelle, if you talk in third person, Michelle did this, I, the soul, am doing this, the guides, they are doing this, they are speaking Michelle wants this. If you want to talk in third person, that is fine. That is absolutely fine. When you're ready, you may speak. Are you here with us? What is your name? I am Uziel. Uziel? Yes. Uziel, how do you feel? Are you ready to talk? 
scared. Why are you scared? Repercussions. Repercussions of what? They wasn't supposed to make contact. Who wasn't supposed to make contact? I wasn't. Why not? Free will. Are your guides present, Gizil? Are you with someone? Yes. Can you name them? No. Okay. Are you willing to talk and give Michelle answers? No. Michelle has lots of questions. She's ready to move forward on her spirit path and she needs a little guidance. Just a little. She needs answers to put puzzle pieces together. Will you help her? Going. In order for her to ascend and to be better, she needs a little bit of guidance, Yuzil. She has to be trusted with this knowledge. Are you willing to help her just a little bit? Can we go backwards in our timeline? Are you willing to take me through a timeline of her reincarnations? Sealed. Why is it sealed? blocks in place why stuck energy is there is there a specific ritual that we need to do or she needs to complete in order to get rid of these blocks. I'm going now. Where are you going? Home. Where is home? The universe. Is there a specific place? No. A name? It is all around home. What is Agamore? Home. Can you tell me about this place, Agamore? It is all around us. Is it like Earth? It is womb. It is mother. Is it lovely there? It was the first time around. The first time? What about the second time? Was it destroyed? Yes. How was it destroyed? Cataclysm. Was it like a war cataclysm? Was it natural? You would call it the Big Bang. Has it been rebuilt? No, just expanded upon. Can you, is, is it in a different galaxy? Earth lives in. Earth is in the Milky Way galaxy. Is it in a different galaxy? It is vesseled. Vesseled in what? Spark. Spark. 
If the human ascends, can we reach Agamor? It could take a while. Do we get there through spirit? It is not much said the human body may never possess ascension because the body breaks down naturally. So to ascend, one must die. One must release like fire, it's an ember. I understand. Can you tell me Michelle's origin, Starcy? No. In the human terms, is she a star seed? No. Okay. She is a spark carrier, meaning that she holds the womb. She holds a part of the womb, an anchor to womb, to home. Is she meant to pass this on to others? It can. It depends on whom. Is there a rule or a list of things that people must be in order for her to pass this on? Yes. Can you give me the list? People worthy of possessing such knowledge. One that is not required to ascend, but is able to pass down spiritually and connected like a tree root system. One must be able to tap into that root system. One must be able to tap into the womb. I see. Is there anything else that you must be in order to have this knowledge passed? Redeemed. Redeemed in how? Redeemed from faith. So you must drop all religions and all of their teachings and get away from that and go back to spirit. No. Redeemed in faith as a newfound faith regardless of your faith. You have found it. You have found the key in which you unlock your soul and your essence and your guide. You have found your spark. You have found your ember. And you put it to cause. Is, me, is your soul, you Ezekiel, and Michelle is a vessel? My name is not Ezekiel. I'm sorry. I did not mean offense. You zeal. I apologize. Please forgive me. All right. Is there any past lives, reincarnations, that is significant that Michelle needs to remember to help her? Or to pass information on to help others? Find Uriah. Find Uriah. What do you mean by that? It is a message. Until you can find Uriah, there is no going back. Is she almost there? No, she has yet to complete. 
I see. Is it a difficult challenge? It could take two lifetimes. It's just the willingness to move. Would it be hard for her, if she knows this information, would it be hard for her to go there? No. Is there anything else you would you would want to let her know on how to complete this task? Finding your eye is at most importance. Do you need to give her a clue and set her on the correct course so she knows? Humans look for heaven in outside places, but they don't look it for in, as in they never activated their soul water. So we are just the vessels in which water flows, like blood flows to you, the soul flows within. So she needs to look within for her answers, and they will be there? Yes. All right, that's very interesting. Thank you. I'm sure this is going to help her tremendously. And again, thank you for allowing me to help and for allowing to come forward. I'm very much blessed and honored. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there, does Michelle the vessel in her mind, does she have many blocks that is not letting her go forward and attain what she desires? Yes. Can you name them? Can you tell me? It is not within the body nor the mind, but the soul itself, her soul water has been suctioned. It's been split. By who? Fractured. By who? Those to wish the ascension and wishes for the womb to not be repaired. Can we, can she fix it? Can she bring all the pieces back together? Maybe, but not in this lifetime. How does she start this journey? Uriah. Back to Uriah. Okay. Is there anything that she can do that will help her start this? Other than finding Uriah, does she need to unblock her chakra her her inner inner energy system does she need to open up her kundalini would that help finding the soul within the soul finding the spark okay she questions her 12th 15th and 18th chakra she thinks that they're blocked are they blocked broken sealed can she unseal them the soul within the soul will take care of that and how does she connect with the soul within the soul Finding with within. Okay. Like, Continue. I cannot say much, but finding her task is what's the greatest importance. Okay. About her life going forward on this earthly plane. As you know, she does tarot readings to help others to go forward and to heal and to give them insight into the spirit world 
and let their ancestors and their deceased loved ones come forward to give messages. Is this the correct path for, for Michelle the Vessel? And for you, Uziel, to come forward and help those that need it? No. What, it, what is her path? Can you tell? Her path is to enlighten others, to believe in themselves. A form of such like this is a path to walk alone. To be alone is to be at peace and to be afraid of all those who are afraid of them is not the wish in which persecution has existed. Can she, to help others as well, can she continue the tarot, tarot reading which gives her joy to seeing how others connect and to give them an aha moment. She may continue, but it leads from her path and that her path has not been chosen a remnant. Her path must follow energy to flow, to transition, to help others transition. That is her path. When she wakes up and she hears this recording, will she understand what you just said about that? It may resonate now. It may resonate in 10 years. Okay. She's been writing short stories. Should she continue to write or should she record them and have oral tradition, oral stories. Speak the message and the message will be received. I see, okay. When she was Yuzil, you were working, Michelle was working on the farrier side, the darker side. Is she supposed to continue with this? Because she's still continuing placing markers and chasing when need be, or calling in someone to help. She never left. Does she need to leave? No. The reaper inside is why it's blocked from her path. She's a reaper first and foremost, and that takes precedence. It's light, neither dark nor gray. It's full spectrum color. It's a vibration within a vibration. So she must, she must balance the farrier role of neither light nor dark with the good of what she's doing, helping people. She needs to learn balance to continue both roles. Life is not gray. Life is not black and white. Life is color and color is around us. She must accept and stop being torn. It's not picking and choosing. It's simply being. Can you give her advice that would help her to balance and to be okay with both sides? The advice I can give that she will not follow a human vessel has choice. It's simply a message of choice. And what would happen if she walks away from the farrier part of it? It will always find her. 
she created them. Can she dictate and make others do it so she doesn't have so much on her plate? She is Karen. Do you have a message that you would like to impart to Michelle, the vessel, about humanity, what she must get across? Humans are so fractured. They see one thing and they mean the other. They do whatever. Until it is repaired, the womb will never come back. You'll be stuck must remain intact. Will she understand that, what you just said, when she wakes up and hears this? Something may click, and some things will remain a mystery. Maybe this message is not for her. Maybe this message is for you. Okay. I will I will take heed of that and I will listen and I will work on it and I will try. Is there anything else since we're on the subject of me? Is there anything that my guides or you would like to tell me about me? Do you think that we as humans, that we wear our humans, or we wear our vessels, are we not others out there? Are we not connected via this root system that we as the connected do, aren't we all in a connected manner? Aren't we our brothers and our sisters? Aren't we the womb? Aren't we the DNA, like you would say? Aren't we what make up the womb? So why are we so different? Do we allow ourselves because of knowledge or because of what you dictate is source? Are we not just one being? Why are we different? I think that has a lot to do with societal, societal norms on segregation and making everybody different instead of just being a loving, happy family that doesn't see skin, that doesn't see, we don't see the soul anymore. We just see the outside. We have lost the aspect of looking within. We have forgotten. Thank you for that beautiful message. Greatly appreciated. The message I give to you is let go of anger. Anger at the world, anger of yourself and accept. Through anger you find acceptance. Don't deny that anger and accept it for what it is, and allow yourself to move forward to forgive and redeem. That is my message to you is redemption through the form of releasing anger. That is why you are blocked, is you carry so much anger. I do, and you are right. Thank you. You will destroy yourself if you don't. Thank you. Back to Michelle. Is there abilities, gifts, 
that she needs to work on, to define, to embrace. The element of fire is born around her. It's a manipulation of nature, of many different elements. It is warmth, it is love, it is destructive, and as it is addictive, in that she will find her purpose. Through the element of fire, she can regenerate. These abilities to regenerate creates a whole new energy. And from that, she's able to pass into transform, into tradition. And it carves and burns away nothing but is everything. You yourself have felt that fire. Yes, I have. You must work on reviving that fire. That is the spark. That is the womb essence. Is there any other abilities or gifts that Michelle has? that she doesn't know about, that she must work on? Transparency, making the light to see the dark, to see the dark is to see the light. You yourself had said that she has an unnatural canny ability to make things seen, to make things thought. That is her gift. It's provocation of the mind. Does she know this? Sometimes. So she must work diligently and hard on this for it to come to fruition full time. Yes. Does she have too much on her plate? Not enough. What more do you want to say to Michelle, the vessel? Don't search for things because things that are searched for will never be found. So do you mean in time they will manifest and come forward when it's the right time to stop looking for things because then you can, they will never present themselves. So just let it be and come in naturally. Yes. Like fire. When searching for fire, you find destruction. As for manifesting, humans manifest so much, and the word manifestation should be struck from spirit. It was placed in your abilities to speak into existence, but the manifestation is perverted, it's egotistical, and therefore it is dirtied. That is my message to humanity, is to move along and allow things to come naturally and not to speak into existence or think into existence because not everything was thought into existence that came into existence it simply just is humanity doesn't realize that all the bad in the world 
or in the universe or inside this connection has been spoken into existence it's not natural Is there anything we can do on a small scale to make it a big scale to fix it? To help? Simply stop speaking and feel instead. So we must all work on opening up our heart chakra. Would that be a good place to start? Your heart only feels so much. Your soul only feels so much. You need to open the hires. That is something humanity has struggled with and lost. They lost the fire. So we must find the spark, the fire, in the womb, in the soul waters, and all will start to make sense and be a better place and a better person. Yes. You see, the fire is what you Hey guys, so I'm sure that you watched the video because it's the last part. Um... So, out of curiosity, I figured that this was kind of a clearing up some points. Um, so, as you can see, the video was very peculiar to me. Uh, <laughs> some messages did resonate away, some didn't. Um, some of it just sent chills down my back, so you don't see how I was actually laying. Um, like, I started off in a meditative pose, and then the camera got, like flipped like it was like nudged upside down so you may see the ceiling or feet and I apologize for that but apparently you didn't need to see how I was sitting or how I was laying because the meditative pose when I went in I started off meditating she walked me through it and then my body just went completely numb and I ended up putting my forehead to the floor so it was like a humbling position and it was super painful like when I woke up um it was weird to wake up because that's not something like that and so my legs were completely numb like they were they felt paralyzed and my hip hurt so bad and my mom was saying like she tried to get me to lay down and I wouldn't lay down so she had to move and that's why the camera flipped up towards the ceiling so that's what you see that ceiling or whatever so if you see toe well when you see toes um clearing up any messages so the soul uziel uziel's name has been familiar to me for a long while i'm talking seven eight years now like i've known about uziel um and I, I used to always call my soul by Uziel. If I needed to talk to my soul, I would be like, oh, hey, Uziel, like, what, what are we going to do? And when I was going through transformation, um, I basically transitioned from calling my soul that and, like, referring it to I, taking ownership of my soul as a vessel, is I. So, therefore, I needed no reason to talk to my soul by separating it because i'm not separated from like my vessel to my conscious or to my soul because we are one so therefore it's i um so and that sounds very egotistical it doesn't but so that knowledge wasn't uriah though the message of uriah find uriah um so i google i did some googling and i did get the name um was like a warrior in the hebrew or kabbalah uh traditions um a very minor character in some of the bible books around the region oral stories or whatever that was passed on 
was a warrior for King David, like a mighty man, like basically. And the story of Uriah in that sense, which it could be a warrior, um, is a person who David slept with his wife and to cover that she was pregnant and had the affair with David, David had sent him to his death and ordered his his crew, his like garrison to basically abandon him and so he would die. And then David ended up taking his wife, um, Uriah's wife, um, as his eighth wife to basically say face that he had gotten this woman pregnant and she did have the affair. Or Uriah could be simply like Nirvana, inner peace, inner enlightenment. That could be Uriah. Um, and like I said, it could be a person. It doesn't have to be a word. It could just be not that specific memory. Um, finding Uriah could be like finding a person whose soul, <laughs> Uriah, you know, the soul's name is Uriah. Um, maybe that. But the fact that it said it could take a lifetime or two kind of reminded me and my mom of finding enlightenment finding the final peak or finding home again um agamor so agamor to me i thought it was a place like a planet system it could have been my origin and i wanted to know if I was from there that was my origin like where would that be and I always kind of thought what if it's on the other side of the Milky Way or in the Andromeda galaxy um so if that's the case Agamor could very be well the cosmic womb um I talked about the spark um in a, a video couple, a couple videos ago that I had contained it I knew that um It was very humbling to have that experience. What kind of sucked about the what you didn't see towards the end of the video because of the fact that it was pointed up towards the ceiling or whatnot was she had asked the question at the very end and I was ejected. Like I literally was ejected and before I was I just saw hands pulling something back or restricting. And I remember being pulled back into my body. And when I woke up, it was so cold. It literally felt like I had gone through and I was in Antarctica. And I it was I was shivering. And I couldn't even feel anything. And I remember I'm like, Mom, I can't move my legs. Like I can't feel. And I'm like pulling myself up from my upper body. And my feet were so dead. Like nothing was flowing. I was cold. I was shaking. But the entire time during that, like, because it felt like stasis, like waking up from cryostasis is what that felt like. Um, and it, it made me think, you know, is that what we go through is stasis when we go through hypnosis or we go through transition? Is we go through a, a symbol or symbiotic transition? Um, Karin. So, Karin, I thought, was an entity um, that I knew from the ferrying days that I remember talking to you guys about. So, for you that don't know and you don't want to watch the video, um, I was a farrier, shadow farrier. And it wasn't until, like, March that I decided to leave or what I thought I was going to leave. And Karin was a mentor, what I thought. And... Karin in Greek mythology is the ferryman for Hades. Um, ferrying the souls, it would be the first being that they had saw on the river Styx to be ferried. Um, so that was Karin. Now, to believe when it said she is Karin, meaning that it was puzzling to me to say that They'd be like, oh yeah, you created the farrier. So therefore, the farrier will, will never be away from you. Um, the Reapers is something I'm not going to talk about because it's not anyone's business. So that is personal to me. But I do want to tell you, I do not, for anybody in the future that this is watching, to be like, oh, I want to get in contact with your soul. Do not. 
do not name drop me Uziel. don't call me by my essence don't if it's meant to happen it's happened you'll come to me regardless but do not call me you do not have my permission and this is not being egotistical this is not i'm just being told you do not have permission to name drop me as Uziel, or name drop my soul as Uziel, or my vessel as michelle okay bad things can happen and there is a mirror for that reason that separation that needs to be separated it's like don't spiritually call upon me like if you have access to me through this physical dimension via social media or something then send me a message you know what i mean but don't call upon me like spiritually please um now you zeal bible actually is <sighs> see you zeal in the bible our king james bible is the angel in which jacob has to wrestle to get on jacob's ladder and basically see the different planes of reality from heaven to earth and so uziel is basically the keeper kind of the crossroads or keeper of transitional forces again i think that's why the farrier came out um so then um another way of thinking because and this is like earlier jewish uh historical biblical whatever books that predate our collection of what we know the bible to be um whether it's like the tumult or what Uziel was looked at as more of a fallen angel and a redeemed angel so he could be both light and dark um but they said he was an archangel um that served under grave you know in gabriel's army and um he fell to earth basically to pursue simon and you, i mean you can look it up it was interesting not much is really known but the fact that I really did for a long time. I really felt like I needed to be redeemed. And it wasn't until I opened myself up to forgive myself was I redeemed. And so redemption is a very good way of thinking. So this soul essence is very redeemable, if that makes any sense. So that is the message of that specific soul. That specific name is redemption because it's neither light nor dark. And so I really feel like when... The message of redemption came through. I kind of was like, I feel this. I knew this for so long. So to have this back made complete sense. Now, with the whole matrix thing, you know, like if you heard mom say like, oh, you know, we're separated through dimensions. We basically became so dense. It was like, if we're so connected to the universe and to other species that we basically perpetrate that divide, that canyon, instead of just being and knowing that we are connected through this root system, this invisible thread, if you will be, to others, that it doesn't even matter that we don't have to ascend or whatever. We basically perpetrate that divide by basically thinking we are different or feeling we are different instead of just simply being in conjunction or connected with that. So therefore, we create the matrix around us instead of just simply believing that you are equal and you are able to be loved and loved and whatnot and you are brothers and sisters regardless of the space and the continuum or the divide that or you know the dimensions it's like the matrix is basically the separation point in which we perpetrate that we're different or we're divided instead of united or connected to one we're just second third fourth fifth whatever instead of one body one organism, one collection, one collective that we created the matrix and we're stuck in that matrix instead of just simply tapping into this connection that we were all given. That was the message I got. I was not actually surprised that message came out, especially given the time that we live and, and another message I wanted to talk about is manifestation. 
I feel like manifestation, if you have to speak out for something that you've wanted, I feel like you defeat the purpose because manifestation can be perverted. As in manifesting something and speaking it out loud versus feeling it and putting it out there in a conscious, subconscious way through energy because energy is heard faster because think about it light travels faster than we speak so why are we verbalizing something then it becomes contaminated some people actually work well but i kind of feel like manifestation is a perversion being that we stop feeling it we stop sending it out telepathically we stop communicating with our soul so therefore we have to communicate with our voice. So therefore it's a redundancy and that's why so many people kind of feel like the law of manifestation and attraction doesn't work for them is because they're not feeling it or it's not needed. It's simply because of the fact that we've put it out there because words, you know, become distorted after so long. So what was to say that's what it is? But I hope you enjoyed the video and I did want to say please be in good hands if you do go through soul regression like please do your research on it um i've had a soul regression with my mom before and this is probably the longer one it's it's been like six seven eight years last time i did it i think i was 18 19 years old so yeah like seven eight years um and this is the farther we've gotten and she has um history of regressing people back so Techniques are used differently, but if you're going to a soul regressionist, um, please do your research and ask about the networking in which they do it, meaning that to ask other people or read the reviews about these people or get in contact if these reviews are online and basically talk to them, you know, if you can. But make sure you're in good company and you can trust that and trust your gut instinct because there's so much that can go so wrong. I've read horror stories of what people have had happen with these people that were like, oh, they're the best. Da -da, and they were just horrible. So please, if you feel like a soul regression is needed for you. Please prepare for it and just don't stress. Thank you so much for watching. Love you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, yeah, so thank you so much.